Thank you everyone for joining. Um, welcome to our presentation. Uh, I am Preeti Desai and I'm here today to talk to you about interoperability in CICD, RoboCat uh, meets Octopus and Octocat. And I have Jerop with me. Hi everyone, my name is Jerop Kipruto. I'm a software engineer at Google. Um, working on cloud CICD, specifically Tecton. And before diving into interoperability, let's first look into CICD process in practice. Thanks, Jared. So uh, let's look at what CICD process um, is in practice. So as a developer, um, when I'm implementing features in an application in this world of microservices when i'm adding a new feature into a service or an application i create a pull request and uh, the build process kicks in and um, runs the uh, the basic testing so basically clones an application repo it runs the um, it builds the application runs the golang test uh, linting, other tests, integration tests, unit tests, any other tests that, uh, that uh, we might have. Once the testing is successful, um, like, you know, Jerob can come and review PR and she says, okay, looks good to me. Everything is good. And uh, we merge it. Now, after we merge this uh, PR, the changes are available upstream in either main or master branch, right? So that's how in this, uh, uh, that's how basically the integration, continuous integration uh, process works where uh, different, a lot of developers come together and kind of uh, implements uh, or works on their own uh, uh, features. So uh, let's, so that was the continuous integration phase. Uh, let's look at continuous delivery. So after, uh, you know, my whole team, uh, Jarab is done with her features and I'm done with whatever the set of features that we desire to be part of the release, we are done implementing them. Uh, what we want to do next is create a release. So the build process, uh again starts running clones the repo and then starts running the validation uh there could be multiple validation um uh, checks that needs to be uh running such as security compliance uh there could be you know even the documentation checks so there could be multiple of these checks running once those checks pass then the application, we build application, and then uh, we publishes. So the build publishes that image into the image repository. So uh, we have created a release, for example, and that completes the continuous delivery phase. Uh, next is the continuous deployment. So now once we have that release uh, image, you know, it's certified or released, and we want to basically deploy it in the staging cluster so that it's available to the other developers or early adopters, or even if you want to deploy it in production so that uh, it's available to the users. So that is continuous deployment. So we just looked at the basic principles of CIED. Uh, now let's begin putting these principles into practice by understanding how the CICD pipeline can be implemented. So we are very fortunate to have so many different options, but so the question is, do we have to choose one over the other or uh, is it kind of possible to you know, build our use cases by using multiple uh, of these uh, systems. So the clear question is, are these systems interoperable? Uh, can these systems operate in conjunction with each other? 
So uh, let's narrow down our options uh, for next 30 minutes and experience building CI CD pipeline using these three systems, Tecton, Argo CD, and GitHub Actions. Um, so Jarep is going to take us into the uh, Tecton world where she'll basically give us an idea of how Tecton has implemented. And uh, then we'll look at the demonstration of Tecton and Argo CD and GitHub Actions. Jarep? Thank you, Preeti, for introducing um, the CICD principles. And next, we look at understanding Tecton. Uh, Tecton is a Kubernetes native open source framework for creating continuous integration and continuous delivery systems. It provides Kubernetes style custom resources for declaring CICD style pipelines. So, Tecton is built on five core building blocks one, it's a step, two, task, three, pipeline four trigger and five catalog. Let's explore each of these blocks. The first is a step, which is equivalent to a container image in which it executes a tool on the specified input parameters and produces an output. Now, we can name the step to significantly and identify what the step is doing. In example, deploy app and specify the container image we want to pull define the environment variables which is accessible to the container such as api key the script which is invoked as well has to be specified as if it was stored inside the container image in this case we have cloud login and which uses the parameters specified the second is a task which executes a pod on the kubernetes cluster a task is a sequence of steps running a sequence of containers all the steps in a task have access to shared workspace, which is mounted on a pod as an implicit volume. So a task is a custom resource with a um, kind task and has to have a name to be referenced um, so that it can be reused. Now, a case deployed to my awesome cloud and the task specification includes a list of parameters which have defaults and description of the parameters. So in a case, API URL and cloud.com. Then we have um, steps deploy up with the same image and the script specified in there. The third is a pipeline, which is a collection of tasks running a set of pods. A pipeline is a graph which provides flexibility to organize the workflow based on the user requirements. A pipeline combines tasks through parameters, results, and workspaces. And it also provides step and task level isolation if needed. So a pipeline is a custom resource of kind pipeline, just like task, and we name it for future reference and reusing. The pipeline specification also uh, includes a list of parameters, like in our case, API URL, cloud region, et cetera, and a list of tasks, like clone, build, deploy. So in our case here, we have git clone followed by build, task, and then at the end, we deploy the build application. I can manually run my pipeline, but how do I automatically invoke the pipeline, such as when I push a code, uh, commit, or create a pull request? For that, we have triggers. The trigger binding extracts information from the event payload, and the trigger template for, provides the blueprint for creating a pipeline run. Here, the event listener connects the trigger binding to the trigger templates. Let's look at um, the trigger binding itself. So trigger binding is a resource uh, that specifies the fields in the event payload from which you want to extract the data, as well as fields corresponding to your trigger template, which will be populated with extracted values. So in our case here, we have a git repo URL as uh, a value that's extracted from the event. Secondly, we have the trigger templates. The trigger template is a resource that specifies a blueprint for the resource, such as task run or pipeline run, that you want to instantiate or execute when an event listener detects an event. So here, it exposes the parameters that you can use anywhere within your resources templates. 
Lastly, the piece that connects this together is the event listener. The event listener is a Kubernetes object that listens for events for a specified port on your Kubernetes cluster. It exposes an addressable sync that receives incoming event, events and specify one or more triggers. And this trigger or each of these triggers um, allows you to specify the event bindings or trigger bindings to extract the field and the values from the payloads and one or more trigger templates that receives these values and allows you to create resources such as task runs and pipeline runs with that data. So here we have binding and then uh, the template from above is. Instead of everyone creating their own task and pipeline, is there any way to share usable resources across the organization? We have a Tekton catalog, which can be shared across the entire organization and with the community. And as you can see here, we have already um, a lot of resources which have been contributed by the community. Next, uh, Pretty will look into Argo CD and how it, it interoperates with Tekton. Thank you. Thanks, Jarab. So we just looked at uh, we just looked into Tekton. Uh, let's briefly look into Argo CD. So Argo CD is a declarative GitOps continuous delivery tool for Kubernetes. Uh, the main purpose of Argo CD is to basically sync whatever is defined in a GitHub application or GitHub repository and make sure that those sources exist in the cluster. So um, we thought that, okay, why not? So, so basically to define or implement uh, CI CD pipeline using Tekton, um, you know, we need to create so many resources tasks, pipeline, event listener, and triggers. So we thought that why not actually uh, treat the Tekton resources as code and basically create a GitHub um, Argo CD application for the Tekton resources so that uh, those can be uh, made available on the cluster. So uh, we looked at the CI CD uh, in practice, kind of, you know, okay, what it is, uh, and uh, kind of looked at the those diagrams. Um, what we have here is a very simplified uh, use case of, you know, just build, test, and deploy. So as a developer, if I want to commit some changes upstream, and make it available to the development cluster so that you know Jareb can access those uh, changes. So now, uh, what what I have here is uh, the build process clones an application repo, runs all the tests, and then builds and publishes um, in that particular image with the changes, and then deploys it on the development cluster. So, the changes are uh, uh, available right away. So here uh, we are going to look at the that simplified use case. We are going to look at the demo of how Argo CD and Tekton together we have make it uh, possible to kind of implement that use case. So uh, for the um, for um, for the Argo CD part, uh, so so f first of all, we have Git repository. Uh, here, we have a GitHub repository uh, where uh, all the Tekton resources are part of the repository and also the application is part of the repository. So creating an application, Argo CD application, to sync all the Tekton resources so that all these tasks and pipeline uh, and also the trigger is basically available on the cluster. Uh, we created one more Argo CD application to kind of, uh, you know, um, for the service itself to kind of deploy that service in a cloud. So uh, this this serve, this Argo CD application can be triggered 
uh, by the Tekton pipeline so that uh, it can sync the deployment, that whole idea. So uh, for making this whole use case possible, uh, the, you know, the, th this is how kind of we have laid out. And uh, the very first thing we need here is um, the uh, secrets for, um, so Argo CD secrets and also, you know, I'm using Docker desktop, so Docker Hub service account to basically push the images. Um, so, and uh, next we want is basically, um, we, you create the application um, the uh, with the Tekton resources. The next is you, we create the Argo CD application, one more application to deploy. And uh, the next uh, is we need a webhook on the GitHub uh, repository so that whenever a new changes are committed, it basically can send payload to the Tekton trigger. So th these four things are the basic configuration steps here. Now the workflow, the way workflow is, uh, we'll look at this workflow uh, in the demonstration is when as a developer, I'm making some changes to my application. Oh, sorry. Uh, and then that push is triggering. Basically there is a webhook is getting triggered and sending that payload to the Tekton trigger, which is listening for that uh, payload. Then that payload data is uh, mapped to a particular basically that pipeline parameters and you know it's basically uh, configured to run that pipeline. Uh, it triggers and creates that pipeline run. And the next is after you know cloning and building and publishing, and then it triggers the uh, sync and wait task in the uh, pipeline, which basically. Um, which basically, uh, you know, d uh, creates a it 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 syncs the uh, deploy application, which in turn will deploy the latest image or whatever image that we have specified from the image repository. So this is how the entire workflow uh, looks like. Now let's look at the uh, demonstration for this particular use case. So let's look at the, uh, you know, the use case we just uh, uh, kind of um, went over. Let's look at that use case in action. So here, like I mentioned, we have a configuration uh, setup. Um, we need to create those secrets for the tasks. Um, Argo CD and the uh, service account for the publish uh, task. So we created Argo C secrets. Now let's create the Docker Hub service account so that the image can be pushed to the Docker Hub. Next is let's create. So I'm using Argo C CLI. Uh, there is no application as such right now. Uh, I'm creating an application with the repository and the destination cluster and also the path. Uh, now sync this uh, application so that basically all the uh, pipeline and trigger binding, everything is getting created on the cluster. Next is again, we create a deploy app. Uh, on the uh, Argo CD, and here we'll see that we have pipeline, which was just created, and then the event listener. So event listener spins off a pod uh, in that particular namespace. So um, we have that service running in the namespace uh, demo namespace, and let's forward so that we can access it. And next is uh, we need to create a webhook so that the payload can be sent to the cluster. And we're using 
Um, so here we create a new webhook on the GitHub. Uh, we basically specify the URL and then JSON um, and then just the push event is fine for now. So it created a webhook. Now, uh, so we are done with the basic setting configuration. Now let's go into the uh, application. This is a very simple application. Um, we are just basically changing the version for now, uh, making it as 101. So this is the diff. Looks good. Now we can push. So now we are pushing the changes so that it's available in the repo. And this push will trigger a run. Let's look at the pipeline. If, so here, look, there was a payload that got delivered. And we should see a pipeline run. So we have a new pipeline run here. And it has finished cloning the entire source and it's building an application. Whatever we have in our Docker file, it's building that um, image. And next once, so it's pushing that image to a call Docker Hub. And once it's, so it's finished pushing. Now it's basically um, syncing, running the sync on the deployment application. So this will deploy that particular image onto the service, uh, onto the cluster. So this is the port that we can access. And let's look at that application. So yay, we have the application deployed. Now let's change this application. So once again, we go and update our, our file where we say, OK, let's do the next version and our double awesome application. And we change our deployment file as well to maintain the same version. So it matches with the application source. And the diff looks fine. Now let's commit. Upgrading the application to our Double awesome application. And we say push. So here we should see one more run and Again, same thing, it's basically building an image with the latest changes, and it pushes that image to the repository. So now we have the latest image and it is now triggering the sync on Argo CD application. And 
that is all done. So we should now be able to again access our application on the same port. And it has double awesome application. So the changes that we just made are now accessible. So this is a very simple use case uh, and demonstration of that use case where the changes that are being made uh, are available and basically it's using Argo CD and Tekton. Um, so um, I'll hand off over to Jarapna for the next um, Tekton and GitHub actions. Thanks, Jarapna. So Mocat plays with Octocut. Uh, good to look at a use case to plug and play with GitHub Actions and Tekton. In this case, uh, GitHub Actions is used for triggering, while Tekton pipelines for execution. So GitHub Actions is an API for cost and effect on GitHub. Why GitHub Actions? Well, GitHub Actions makes it easy to build, test, and deploy code right from GitHub. So why not write the execution logic in vendor agnostic Tekton pipelines and trigger them using GitHub Actions. The use case we look at uh, involves a couple of steps. First, a developer pushes code to the application repository. Then this change triggers a GitHub um, workflow or uh, the specification in GitHub Actions for um, an execution or workflow that needs to happen, which thereafter triggers a Tekton pipeline run. And that pipeline run itself uh, contains um, the pipeline and workspace, and the pipeline is made up of a series of tasks. Uh, the first one is cloning, second one is linting, third testing, building, and then running that application with the change or the commit that the developer just made. And some of this pipeline, um, most of the first four, uh, tasks come from the Tekton Hub or the Tekton Catalog, which is shared by the community. While the second part, um, the run itself, comes from uh, the Tekton folder within that uh, repository itself. So you can fetch your tasks or resources from different sources depending on your requirements or on your infrastructure. So next, we look at this use case and uh, see how it works together. We'll start by going to the GitHub Actions, our uh, GitHub bucket list and look up Tekton. And the first thing we find is install Tekton um, GitHub Action. You can see here we have very prerequisite specified that this GitHub Actions configures TKN CLI, the Tekton CLI, um, in your environment for managing Tekton resources. So can see here that the process uh, for usage is uh, that you just specify that you use jerov slash tkn, specify the version as needed. Um, but this is after installing kind or whichever other format of Kubernetes cluster um, you want to use and then installing Tekton pipelines in your environment. Let's go to the project uh, itself. You can see those same steps and guidelines for how to use it as specified within the repo. And the action YAML, which is the main part of uh, this GitHub action, takes a version that you can specify for which uh, CLI you want to use. So we we'll go to the demo repo where we show how this actually uh, is used to lint, test, and build a Hello World Go application. The application is simply saying Hello World in this case, but we can modify. Uh, what or who we're greeting. And we have a simple test there that verifies that uh, that function works as expected. Then we have a Tekton repo with some Tekton resources or Tekton folder. And then we have the work close uh, folder which specify the GitHub action itself that will be triggered upon when events happen. So let's pull this file locally and see or make a change and see how this impacts things. But first, we'll verify that things are how we expect or how we saw it in the in the repository on GitHub. It's the same function, hello. And 
And then um, you can see here we have the same test, test hello, confirming that hello world um, is what you would get. And we can locally trigger this test and see whether it's passing. And then you yeah, can see that the workflow is as expected. It's acting on push, pull request, and workflow dispatch, which is a manual triggering. And the series of steps here where we're setting up kind, uh, we are applying uh, Tekton pipelines, the environment we are installing TKN, and then we're using TKN to install um, Tekton tasks from the hub. Let's see, git clone, golang test, golang lint, golang build. Then this one for uh, applying a local task. So for git clone itself, can see that it's there in the hub as expected. Um, so this is what we are pulling into the environment, installing it. Second one is golang test right there. And we should be able to find that in the hub as well. Yeah, we have Golang test there with all the parameters and what species it's expecting. And then the linting uh, Golang CI lint. The same case, we're expecting to have it in um, the Tekton hub with specifications of all the parameters it expects. Or can take and the workspace containing the source to build. And lastly, from the hub, we're installing Golang build. Similarly, you can see that this is a task for building Go projects and you can see the parameters and workspaces it's expecting. Lastly, we have Golang Run, which is not available in the catalog of the hub, but we've specified it locally or in our project. And we can see here the labels, the description, the parameters, um, to expect a package, context, version, etc. And then the workspace itself, uh, which has the source code uh, that will be run. And then the script, which actually uh, contains the logic uh, that we we want for this function to run the application. So all of these things come together in the workflow file. Um, then finally, we're going to start a pipeline, Tekton uh, pipeline YAML, which is specified here as well, and that puts or connects all of those tasks together. Let's look at how that works. When you open the pipeline.yaml file, we'll see that uh, we have the work area where is the workspace where the uh, code will be um, committed to and then expecting a result, a SHA. And then we have the clone task, linting, testing, building, and then running, all of them um, organized sequentially. And they're all with task ref referencing the uh, respective um, task from either the hub or the catalog or uh, Golang run, which is specified in the repo itself. And then lastly, the, we have uh, the workspace, which comes from a volume claim template. Um, so here, pers persistent volume claim here that's specified uh, within the Tekton talk talk folder. We'll start that pipeline and then uh, we list it and then describe it. and um, validate that uh, it does all those steps or tasks that we expect it to. So to simulate um, triggering of this workflow using a git commit or a push happening, we're going to modify hello world um, and say hello cdcon, or we can say hello anything really, uh, but let's just say cdcon. So we're going to Validate that that's the only change you've made. And then I'm going to commit, add the change and then commit it. Hello, CDCon is the message. 
then you push this change. Cool. Then you can see that that triggered an action. GitHub action is starting the workflow run. And look at the code. You can see the commits. You can see the commits tra for that change that we made. See, uh, go back to the action or the workflow run. You can see we checked out the code. We set up kinds. Then we're installing Tekton pipeline, we've installed TKN, installing all the tasks from the catalog, and then you can see Git clone has been installed there, and it has the same, when you describe it, the same specification that we have from the hub. Same thing with uh, the linting task, the building task, and then the running task, which we specified last year. can see here that uh, TKN was installed with version 18 for Linux, which is auto handled uh, by the GitHub actually, the TKN GitHub actually itself. Okay, so seeing that the pipeline is running and we're showing the logs, the clone task uh, has executed. You can see the SHA is exactly what we saw in the commit within the repo, cloning. We've cloned this source code, we're linting it. Then you can see the tests passed with the coverage detail there as well. So we've built it and then we ran and you can see hello CDCon. The application has been updated, the pipeline run is successful. Then when we describe it and get the further detail, we can see all the tasks that executed, how long they took, and their status. And you can see that the results of the commit has been propagated all the way to the pipeline run. So this demonstration simply shows you how Tekton uh, can be used for uh, writing the execution logic while GitHub Actions just for triggering and how these two interoperate to solve for your use cases. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And if you have any questions, let us know. <laughs>